Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is your Revati came with another topic, legal procedures. I have divided this topic into two parts for your better understanding. So in this video, we'll be discussing about the basics of court, inquest procedures, types of court, powers of magistrate, summon and evidences. Firstly, we'll start with the basics. IPC, Indian Penal Code which was drafted in the year 1860. This is an independent existence all about the criminal law in India. This defines the offences and explains the appropriate punishments to these offences. Next, coming to CRPC, Criminal Procedure Code, which was enacted in the year 1973. This has the role to regulate the procedures that are involved in the court proceedings. This ensures whether the criminal cases are investigated according to the law or not. Next, IEA, Indian Evidence Act, which was enacted in the year 1872. This involves the evidence, how to deal with different kinds of evidence, the, its collection, preservation and the use of evidences. You just have to remember the year, so usually they ask in UGC. Next, criminal law. This includes the offences that are against the public. Example, the offences that are against a person, property offences, public safety crime, security of the state, etc. Example, you can take murder, theft, assault and so on. Next, civil case. This involves the dispute that is between two individuals or parties, especially the personal functions or something like that comes under the civil law. Here you have to know about the two terms, plaintiff, defendant. Plaintiff is uh, someone who is the one who is complaining, like who is actually coming forward to put the case on someone else. The defendant is the opposite person, that is the accused. In criminal law, plaintiff will always be the state and then defendant will be the one who has committed the crime. Coming to inquest, which means investigation to know the cause of death, whether is it natural, suicide or any murder. There are four types of inquest. But only two of them are followed in India. They are police inquest and magistrate. Firstly, what is police inquest? According to the section 174 CRPC, the police officers, especially who is in charge, usually the sub-inspector, will conduct the inquest. Here, they uh, usually take care of almost all the cases like murder, suicide and all. Once they get the information regarding the crime, they have to, the police officer has to report to the nearby magistrate so that he can go along with the magistrate to the spot and along with the presence of respectable persons of village who are called as panchas, only with them they can carry the investigation process. Once the investigation is done, the investigation details are put on to the inquest report, which is also called as Panchanama. This Panchanama is signed by the police officer and Panchas. Once investigation is done, if the death has happened naturally, you can just give the dead body to the relatives itself. Otherwise, if there is any foul play you feel so, then you have to take it for the post-mortem examination which will be conducted by the state government or doctors. You can also do in private hospitals, but only the certified doctors are allowed to do the post-mortem examination. Next, coming to the magistrate's inquest. Under the section of 176 CRPC, the inquest that is conducted by any magistrate can be district magistrate or subdivisional magistrate, does these inquests only uh, usually in the special situations like the death that has occurred in the control of police like in police custody, police firing or in postal school reformative and so on. In another condition where a woman 
deaths due to dowry, rape or in police custody. The other special thing is the death in psychiatric hospitals or exhumation where you dig the body to reinvestigate. These are the special situations where magistrate has to handle the case. Maybe along with the police but magistrate should be present. Next going to coroner's inquest. This kind of inquest is not at all held in India. Keep this in mind, okay? Mostly it is held in UK, some parts of USA and some other countries. Who is a coroner? He is a judicial officer who can be a lawyer or doctor with five years of experience responsible for investigation. This personality is called as coroner in England. Usually he has some judicial pass and the jurors here are sworn, are made to promise to give the true verdict according to the evidence only. Next coming to medical examiner system. This is mostly followed in USA, Japan and China etc. But not at all in India. Here the medical examiner performs the role as that of coroner but he doesn't have any authority to order for an arrest of any person. But this system is superior to coroner's and police inquest. Next coming to the courts of law. In India there are four types of court. Firstly Supreme Court which is the highest judicial court that is located in New Delhi, which has the power to supervise the all the other courts in India according to the Article 134 of Indian Constitution. Next is the High Court, which is the highest tribunal for the state, usually located in the capital of every state. This can try offences and give any sentences according to the law. This is under the Article 214 of Indian Constitution. Here we have to put this in mind that there are two divisions. One is Court of Appeal that is Appellate Courts which includes High Court and Supreme Court. The other is Court of Trial which includes Session and Assistant Session Courts. Here the starting of the case is from the Trial Court which digs up the facts of evidences and the witnesses and then make the decisions whereas once it is done and goes to the appeal courts there they don't dig up the facts and evidences so they just check the law whether it is done according to the legal procedures or not only check the legal issues that's the reason the sentence do not hold trial prima facie they don't start from the fact of evidence again so why another difference is that in the trial court only one judge is present whereas in the court of appeal there are more than one judge present. So coming to the trial courts here the session court is usually established by the state government which is usually located in district headquarters. This can try any cases that are only committed by the magistrate and it can pass any sentence but not death. The death sentence should only be passed after the permission of the high court only. They can conduct the trial of murder case. So you have to remember this sentence because they usually ask in UGC which is the court that conducts the trial for murder cases. Then it is session court. Keep this in mind. Next, an assistant session court which has the right to pass sentence of imprisonment up to 10 years only. And whereas coming to the fine, it is unlimited. They don't have any restrictions. Coming to the types of magistrate. Before that, what? who is a magistrate? Magistrate is the one who has been appointed by the judge. And he is appointed to maintain the law in the particular area that he has been appointed. Here, he has the right to provide fine and imprisonment. Whereas, lifetime imprisonment and death will be decided only by the judge. As there are different class of magistrate, they have different limitation of imprisonment and fine to be imposed. 
so firstly chief judicial magistrate has limitation up to 7 years because beyond 7 years imprisonment it leads to life imprisonment then coming to fine which is unlimited according to the section 63 of ipc but should not be too excessive first class judicial magistrate has imprisonment of up to 3 years only and 10000 rupees is the limit then second class judicial magistrate has limitation of up to 1 year and 5000 rupees fine limitation so coming to the juvenile courts where the children who are below 18 years of age who commit a crime would be put under juvenile court according to the section of 27 crpc because act according to the principle that the mentality of children and adult is different we have to take a separate care of juvenile crimes now what is an offense which under the section of 40 ipc and 2 crpc any act that is punishable under the law there are two types of offense non cognizable offense and cognizable offense non cognizable offense is an offense where the police has the right to arrest only with the warrant from the magistrate not without any warrant and this example you can take forgery cases cheating defamation etc and the procedures followed in this offense are under the section of 155 crpc Whereas cognizable offence is an offence where the police officer can arrest even without the warrant from the magistrate. Example: murder, rape, dowry, death, ragging, etc. And the procedures for these are mentioned in the section of 154 CRPC. Here you have two other terms like bailable and non-bailable offence. Bailable comes under non-cognizable offence where the arrested persons are given bail under reasonable justification by the police itself but for cognizable offences bail is decided only by the judge whether to give him bail according to the reason or not now coming to punishments there are various kinds of punishments i have arranged according to these sections here fine which is defined under section of 53 ipc then lifetime imprisonment under the section of 55 and 57 of ipc then imprisonment which is again simple under the section 60 ipc and rigorous where they do hard labor and that is under the section 73 and 74 of ipc the others are seizing of the property and death Here you have to remember a point. Like according to the Article Twenty, Subdivision Two, Constitution of India, a person who has already been convicted to one particular offence, he cannot be convicted again for the same offence. So you have to remember this. Coming to capital punishments, where different kinds of death punishments given. Firstly, hanging, as we all know, electrocution is where uh, in a chair. high voltage electric shock is given to the person to make him die next garrotting and gulletin where decapitation of head is taken place coming to lethal injection where different lethal chemicals are given to make him unconscious on so on like intravenously they give sodium thiopental to make him unconscious then pancuronium bromide make him paralytic and stops breathing next potassium chloride it stops the heart rate so just remember the chemical name and its role then shooting or gas chamber this is how the gas chamber looks like here too if a person has to be grant pardons or uh, the death punishment should be postponed all of these can be done only by the president only he has the power next summon or subpoena which is a document issued from the court to a particular person to act as the witness in a particular case here he must obey the summon suppose if he is asked to bring any document as an evidence then he should according to the section of 91 crpc 
if he fails to attend the court without a valid reason then if it is a civil case he has to pay for the damages if it is a criminal case then he has to make a justification or the justification is not fine he will be punishable as imprisonment of up to 6 years or 1000 rupees fine or both according to the section of 174 ipc he is punishable next coming to the conduct money in civil case a witness if he attends a court then he will be offered some fee if suppose the fee paid is not sufficient then he should ask the judge and he will decide before giving the evidence in case of criminal case he will not be paid any such kind of fee because it is his duty to serve the court however he will be paid some travel charges or conveyance and all so again if he doesn't attend then he will be considered as the disobedient coming to medical evidence here evidence means any statement that is produced by the witness in relation to the investigation so that it is accepted in the law here the evidence of the witness are considered to be positive but whereas the evidence given by the doctors or expert is only taken as opinion that is as a supportive evidence because the witness sees the crime directly or act that is happening right coming to the types of evidence firstly documentary evidence a document which is defined under the section 3 of iea which means any matter that is expressed in a substance or by means of letters or figures and which can be used for recording purpose as an evidence is considered according to the section of 29 ipc here there are two kinds of evidence primary evidence which is considered to be the original document whereas the secondary evidence is something the duplicate of the original document next will be the oral evidence and next direct evidence where the evidence itself is the cause of the issue example an injury that is occurred due to an electric blanket and if you get the electric blanket as the evidence then it is a direct evidence coming to the indirect evidence where it is not the direct testimony of the eyewitness for example a murderer has killed the victim at a particular place but the witness has seen the murderer with a knife but he didn't see the murder murderer killing the victim so this becomes the indirect evidence whereas here say is something a witness has stated which he has not actually seen but has obtained it from the third party for example the witness explains it in the court which he has listened it from the third person that the c has committed the crime then that becomes the hearsay so this is the end of the part 1 in the part 2 we will be discussing about dying declaration oral evidence record of evidence witnesses the important acts in iea ipc crpc so finally if you have any queries and choice of topics kindly put it in the comment so that i can make it in the next video finally ending up with the quote dream big set goals take action have high targets have your study plan set and don't stop there work out for your plan and there is your success thank you for watching the video till the end If you like the video kindly put a like subscribe and comment for more and more videos